there it is. Thanks for purchasing this video. Today we're going to be looking at how to draw this pumpkin, then how to blend our colors with watercolor into these gorgeous different oranges and reddish oranges. In a few minutes, we're going to be looking at how to outline and add this gorgeous shadow and make it look really realistic. So hopefully you either have in your possession or you purchased through an art kit a watercolor palette, a detail brush and a larger brush, pencil and Sharpie and some water for your watercolor. You also in your art kit have a blending pad to blend your colors and hopefully you have some water at home. So let's look how to draw and then paint these pumpkins. Once you have opened up your little present of an art kit, you should really display everything out just so you know that you have everything that you need right in front of you. This is the blending palette, pencil, marker, obviously your paper, your water, the only thing I didn't give you, with your brushes in it, and then your palette right here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just figure out what composition you want. How many pumpkins? How many leaves? Do you wanna add an acorn? Do you wanna add maybe um, a vine onto your pumpkin? This is where we're gonna be drawing it all out. So first, start with your stems. There's something called the rule of thirds. You always wanna add the most exciting thing to your composition to one of the thirds of your paper. So maybe here, 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 or here. I'm gonna start my first pumpkin right here. This is gonna be the top of my stem. And you're just gonna do a little zigzaggy line. Then some curve line. The more organic your line, the better your pumpkin will start looking. Then you just want to start making points where your stem goes into your pumpkin. And again, the more organic, obviously, the more plant-like your pumpkin will get. Once you have a really nice stem, you can also make it a little bit taller. Make sure you draw really light so then you can erase after. With watercolor, it likes to remember indents in the paper and every line you draw is a little bit of an indent. So try to go as light as you can. Now we're gonna draw little contour lines along the stem. Contour lines is just going along the shape of the stem. So our stem goes in a little bit there then out, and then out, and then out. And again, really curvy and cool. Now you kind of have to think, what kind of shape of a pumpkin do you want? Do you want a big oval pumpkin? Do you want a little ornamental pumpkin? So just sketch out that shape. Almost think of like a lima bean or a little bit of a divot on the bottom and then curves lines into that oval or that circle. At that point, you just wanna draw from your stem curve lines. From the stem, curve lines. We're gonna refine this later, so don't worry if it looks a little bit too sketchy. Don't worry about that at all. Okay. You can see here, it looks like a drawing of a pumpkin, not a real pumpkin. What I'm gonna do now is from line to line, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of a rounded bottom. But I'm not done yet. I also want to add a little bit of some roundness to the back of my pumpkin just to give it a little bit of dimension. See how looking at the background of your picture gives it a little bit 
more visual interest. This is a really good looking squash, I think. All right, so I only have one pumpkin here. It's in the third of my paper. Maybe I wanna add, let's say a leaf. The leaves I have in the demonstration picture are just almond shaped. So think of like lemons, almonds, little stem. And then on the outside, I'm just drawing a little zigzaggy line, really, really tight zigzags. Our eye really likes multiples of things too, so I'm actually gonna draw maybe one more underneath that leaf. And I'm just showing you basics here. Maybe you want this to be in a pumpkin patch. Maybe you want this to be in a big um, pile of leaves. It's all up to you, of course. I have my leaves here, I have a pumpkin here. Maybe behind this pumpkin could be like a larger pumpkin. So the exact same thing. Draw your stem, which is just an oval, an organic y ziggy zaggy line. And then into those little points, I want my pumpkin to be at least this big. So I have these guys, they look pretty good, but this is where you can kind of think about, does my picture make sense? Do I really love all these different shapes? I actually think this one's a little bit too squat. So I'm just gonna extend my lines a little bit. Just to make it a little bit longer. Um, I have my leaves, I have my pumpkins. Um, if you did wanna maybe draw like an acorn, acorns are really easy. They're just ovals, little point, and then you draw just a curve line up top, curve line on there with a little stem. Boop. It's really easy, little acorn. At this point, especially if you're a beginner, I really like to go in and just outline all of my lines with a Sharpie and then erase all of my pencil lines really quickly. So let me do that. I'm going to outline all my lines with this Sharpie and making sure that I really like everything that's going to be outlined and stand out. beautiful picture I totally love it and again you can add in so many more things I am just giving you the absolute basis here so or I think basic oops now it's time to actually start painting what I suggest is that you never paint two sections too close to each other so I'm gonna teach you how to just do the very basic blend of the pumpkin just like in our picture here that red to orange to yellow. And then I'm gonna teach you how to make that green into yellow into orange blend. So grab your larger brush and add just a little bit of water to the bottom of your pumpkin. All the way up to the top. And don't let this dry before you get your paint. careful not to let it blend out of your lines too. Pretend like this is a coloring look. And then you go into your yellow paint. Now these are pigmented paints. They're gonna last you a really long time. You do need to add water though. Get your yellow really condensed onto your brush and just press it in along the top of your pumpkin. And 
and go all the way to like halfway. And then clean off your brush. I always tell people to tap, tap, tap the bottom of their paintbrush and never whack it. That just gets me a bit of Go into your yellow paint. I love this palette so much. It's so easy to use. And now with quite a bit of water and paint on your brush, you're just going to paint in. And this technique is called wet on wet. So these will eventually kind of blend into each other, but we're gonna go over it with a little bit of water too. Go pretty far down your pumpkin. It almost looks like candy corn right now. <laughs> Again, tap, tap, tap on your brush. Get a little bit of that red. That like candy apple red that's right next to your orange. And add that to the bottom of your pumpkin. All right. So they're not as blended as you see in the other picture. So that's when you add just water. Blend it as much as you'd like. I went a little crazy in my example, so I'm gonna go a little less crazy here, but you can really get in there. And something about watercolor that's really important to remember is that it's just gonna keep transforming. The way it dries is never the way it looks right now. So this just might keep blending once we let it dry a bit. Okay, oh that's pretty. See that little dot of paint there? If you get a really dry paintbrush, you am gonna use paper towel. and suck that up and get rid of any puddle. All right, so I'm gonna let that hang out. I am not gonna go over and paint this or else these two will just bleed into each other. So I'm gonna go every other section of my pumpkin. So I'm going every single other one. However, before they dry too, too much, I do have a little bit more red that I want to pop out here, a little bit more painterly red. So I'm just going to add that in wherever I want a little bit more shading. And you get to kind of pick, do you like it more faded? Or do you like that kind of painterly look? I like to make it look like a painting, not too, too realistic. So I allow all these little brush strokes. And with watercolor, one, it's really important to have your water the same side of your paper as your hand so you're not dribbling too, too much. Because if I reached over there, I would probably get just like a big mess, big massive dot of um, dripping. But this way, if I drip, it'll only be around here, hopefully. <laughs> Don't work too close to the sections that are trying. If you notice right here, those teeny tiny little humps in the back, I'm just adding a little teeny tiny bit of yellow. And then right on the corner, or right on the upper part, I'm adding in that little bit of that pumpkin orange. So hopefully they will kind of blend together. However, if they don't blend together, just add a little bit of water and they will do their magic. Just like these. Gorgeous. All right, so now that these are drying and I do want them to completely dry before I go to the other areas, now it's time to use your blending pad. I'm going to start painting these little leaves here. One I'm going to paint a uh, greenish yellow and the other I'm going to paint with true fall colors like my pumpkins. Um, here, just to add a little bit of contrast, this is what I'm going to do with the green. So there is a green in your palette right there. I'm going to add 
some water to my teeny tiny brush. Always, always, always with watercolor, if you're mixing, mix light first. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to my green. So I'm taking that yellow, I'm putting it on my blending palette with my water. Remember, more water, less color. Technically less pigment. And then I'm going to go in and just half of this yellow I have here, I'm just going to take a little swipe of green. Green is a pretty powerful pigment, so you don't need too much. I'm going to add in that green. So I have half yellow, half green. Normally, biologically, leaves turn yellow at the edges first and then green at the middle. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my green to the middle of my leaf. Watercolor is also really great to layer. So if this is a too light of a green for you, when it dries, you can add a little bit more and it'll get darker. Then along the edges, I'm gonna add straight yellow. And then between this, right where it's white right there, I'm gonna add that greenish yellow. I'm kind of scrubbing at the paper, not too hard because I don't want it to get kind of peely, but I am trying to blend them together. Okay, so it's the first layer for that leaf. I'm gonna let that dry. Um, for your little acorn cutie, there's a brown in your palette, the lightest brown first. I'm gonna get a little bit of water and grab that brown. I'm gonna paint the whole thing that beautiful chocolatey brown. A little bit too much water. And then right where the shadow would be, kind of on that bottom part, I'm gonna add a little bit of the dark brown right next to that light brown, right here. To again, add a little bit more depth and value. Gorgeous. All right, now let's go to these stems. As long as nothing is too wet around them, you're gonna paint the whole thing in this light brown and then let it dry. If you ever do accidentally put too much pigment in or too much paint, just get a clean paintbrush and just take some off of your paintbrush. We're gonna go back in and add those little textured lines and different shadows too, but we need to let everything dry for a second. Everything is pretty much dry now. I'm just gonna go in and finish these last little sections, and then we're going to figure out how to finish these leaves and our acorn and our stems, and then all we have to do is just shadow, and then we're done. I know, it's gone by really fast, and I hope that you have relaxed through this whole thing. All right. Now, unfortunately, I still have like one little odd section, but I'll do that after. Another part of your blending sheet. Take the medium sized brush again with that yellow. Swirl a whole bunch of it onto your blending sheet. Oh, that. Since yellow is pretty pale, you're going to want to. A lot of pigment there. You ready? So now you're gonna straight into that red. It almost looks orange on camera, but it is red. 
and then just like the green, you're going to blend half of it. Alrighty, so that is our next leaf color. If you want a nice like fall leaf, we're gonna add browns to these two and add another layer. But for right now, grab that yellow, paint the whole thing yellow this time. Then just on the ends, go into that darker shade of orange. And just on the outside, add that outline as far as you'd like. And we're going to add another layer to that too. So I'm going to let that dry. Let's talk about that little acorn. Again, on your blending palette, take that light brown. Acorns are a little bit lighter because they have a whole bunch of texture on them. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that yellow, almost treat that as a white. Mix that together and get a little tan. Then paint the top of the acorn tan and do the exact same shadow technique, but with just the light brown right near the bottom. Just give a little bit of dimension. Now, if you notice, there are some veins happening. This to me is a beautiful part of watercolor. If you don't love that, you can kind of blend it away with a little bit of water. But I love these little marks that happen with papers. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna let this dry. It shouldn't take too long, maybe a few minutes. And then we're gonna finish off this painting with some details and finally the shadow. Detail time. Woo it's one of my favorite times in paintings because you can really figure out what you want to be focal points. So with leaves, we know that leaves have really cool little stems. That um, it's called the fractal. So it starts on one line and starts branching out. Most leaves are like that. And most trees are like that. Also, remember those lines that we drew earlier? You're gonna start using that contour, the little curve of those lines. And we wanna really accentuate all these little details. So now what I'm gonna do is with the tiniest brush we got, which I think the tiniest point would be this little brush the four round. And you're gonna start adding in your little details. Like, I think I want more yellow on the outside of this leaf. Just to make it look a little bit more fall. I might even add a little bit of orange just to deepen my yellows. Gonna add more yellow to the outside of this leaf, and we just half. This part is completely up to you. Where do you want it to be a deeper tone? What colors do you really love? If you want to add a hint of uh, maybe violet or blue somewhere. You totally can. I'm hitting just one side of this leaf with some red. Oh, that's very pretty. Just adding just a little bit of water so this kind of softens up a little bit. There we go. Cool. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, the top of acorns have a little bit of texture on them, so I'm gonna add a little bit of texture with my dark brown. Do, 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 do. Cool. With my darker brown here, 
I'm actually gonna mix a super dark brown on my blending palette. By adding this dark brown with a little bit of black. Black is right next to the dark brown. Don't get that mixed up with the violet over there. Oh, gorgeous. It's like an ochre. Then you're just gonna outline some of the lines in your pumpkin stem. Maybe add a little bit of value to the top of the stem too. Beautiful. All right, now that shadow. You are gonna take just a little bit of water on your brush. Right next to the black, there is a violet. Get a whole bunch of violet onto your brush. Put it onto your blending palette. Go in to your blending palette with a little bit of black just to darken up that violet. That violet's gonna give you that dimension of actual like sunlight and not just a painting. All right. Once you get that really dark violet, you're gonna outline just the bottom of all your shapes. We're gonna go back in and soften this with a bit of water. So work a little fast. Then go in with some water and scrub that out to make a shadow. All shadows are darkest near the thing casting the shadow. And make sure you go all the way up. Don't have any little white pockets because then that throws off the shadow completely. Acorn, you get it too. <laughs> and our leaves. Once you get that all uh, painted out, then get a really clean paintbrush and just add one little line so it kind of diffuses out. And can't you see that that gives it so much dimension? Amazing. All that's left is if you want to go through and just splatter a whole bunch of paint just to make it a little bit of a vignette of um, something to look at to kind of frame it. You totally can. I don't think I'm going to. The last thing to do is just to sign it. Date it. And then either hang it up or give it away. I think this came out really cool. And obviously allow it to dry. You can keep working at it. Don't add too much water at once. Um, this you can just clean off with a little wet paper towel. Make sure that you clean your brushes with some soap. Oh, here we go. I guess I am doing some dots. Gorgeous. And you don't even have to kind of shut this palette. If you want to just allow it to totally dry, you just add water to it after. And yeah. All right. So let's head it to the outro. Thanks for watching, guys. Whew, okay. So for me, it's only been like five minutes. For you, maybe it's been an hour. Maybe it's only been 10 minutes. I don't know. But hopefully you have a beautiful masterpiece that you can hang on the refrigerator, maybe frame, maybe give it to somebody to make their day at Thanksgiving or just to be friends with them. But I hope you had a lot of fun. Remember, you can keep adding to your masterpiece and do whatever you want because it's yours to keep forever. So guys, thank you so much for purchasing this video. I really appreciate it. It helps us 
small business owners during this time. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and remember just keep being creative. All right, see you soon, bye.